Good morning, Change Church. Good morning, online audience. I am so happy to be here on this day, the second Sunday in January in 2023. Like they said on last week, millions didn't make it. But I was one that did. Millions didn't make it past 2020. Many didn't make it past 2021. Millions didn't make it past 2022. But I was one that did. I'm so grateful that I was one that made it. There were so many times that in my early 20s, I didn't think I was going to see 20 on, on 21. But I made it to 21. I made it to 22. I made it to 23. I made it to 40. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. Because I was foolish. But God seemed fit to let me live. You know, I was, I was thinking on oh, just last week, I seen DeMar Hamlin literally die on a field. And I'm reminded of a scripture over in John when Jesus called Lazarus. He said, Lazarus, come forth. In 2023, God is going to start calling some dead things to life. Some things that we thought was dead, situations we thought was dead. Relationships we thought was dead. He's going to start calling those things forth. What I'm reminded is that even in 2023, God is showing himself mighty. He's showing himself powerful. Do you realize a man died on a field, but the saints start praying. The saints start interceding. God is not slack on his word. One thing, he's a man of his word. If he said it, he's going to do it. If he said he, you are healed, you are healed. If he said you are delivered, you are delivered. If he said you are free, you are free. He's a man of his word. Hallelujah. I thank God for being a man of his word. One thing about his word, you can stand flat-footed on his word. His word won't come back void. Stand on his word, saints. Hey, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hey, glory, glory, glory. In my old church, they say, if I owe God anything, I owe him a praise. How many owe God a praise? How many owe God a praise? Yes, Lord, I owe him a praise. After all that he's done for me, I owe him a praise. Hey, God of money. Hey, 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 hey. Hallelujah. Hey, glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Hey, glory. I owe him. I owe him. I owe him. I owe him. I owe him a praise. Hallelujah. I was scripture reading. I was scripture reading. Coming from Psalms 91. It says, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadows of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him I will trust. Surely He shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with His feathers and under His wings shall you take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be, be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand shall fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand, but I shall not come near you. Trust in his word. Trust in his words. Father, in the name of Jesus, it's again that we call on you and say thank you, God. I've got so much I can say thank you for. You did that just for me, I say thank you for that. You woke me up, I say thank you for that. You started me on my way, I say thank you for that. 
I was clothed in my right mind. I say thank you for that. I had food to eat. I say thank you for that. Nothing is too small to say thank you. I say thank you for giving me a job. I say thank you for giving me money. I say thank you for giving me my right sin. God for that, I say thank you. Oh, today, God, as we assemble into your presence, God, let your, your presence fall upon us, God, like do, God. Rain on us, God. Let your Holy Spirit just fall fresh upon us, God. God, everyone that enter into the sanctuary, let them be on one accord, God, and that is praise your name, God. Look upon this whole sanctuary and this movement called the Change Church, God. We want to be healed, set free, and delivered, God. Look upon the man servant that's going to deliver your word, God. Let him deliver a right now word, God. Again, God, let your presence be known in this place, God. We'll be careful to give your name the praise, the honor that you so deserve. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Jesus name victory is mine victory is mine victory today is mine I told Satan get thee behind for victory today is mine come on you say it victory is mine victory is mine victory today is mine I told Satan, get me behind, for victory today is mine. Joy is mine, joy is mine, joy today is mine. I told Satan, get me behind, for joy today is mine. Oh.
got it. Somebody need to declare it. I got it, I got it, I got it. I got it, I got it, I got it. I got victory everywhere.
some change in your life. We had to change church. I dare you to call this name. Something happens when you call that great name. Something happens when we call that great name. Something happens when we call that great name. Healing happens when we call that great name. Deliverance happens when we call that great name salvation happens every time you call that great name there is power in the name of Jesus power in the name there is power in the name of Jesus, so much power in your name. There is power in the name of Jesus, power in your name. Come on, declare it this morning. There is power in the name of Jesus, power in your name. There's power in your name. There's power in the name of Jesus. So much power. Power in the name. There is power in the name. There is power in the name of Jesus. So much power. Power in your name. There is power in your name. There is power in the name of Jesus. So much power. Power. Power 
is power in your name. There is power in the name so of Jesus. Much power, power in your name. And you just speak his name and call out your concern and speak his name and call out your concern and speak his name. wonder you are what a wonder you are Jesus 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 what a wonder you
Why don't you lift your hands right there? Higher and higher and higher and higher and higher. Keep on lifting me. Keep on lifting me. Keep on lifting me. Sickness can't hold me down. Keep on Higher and higher and higher and higher. Keep on lifting me. Depression can't keep you down. Keep on lifting me. Debt can't keep you down. Keep on lifting me. Keep on lifting me. Higher and higher and higher. Let's say it one more time. Somebody say it out loud. Keep on lifting me. 
My haters keep can't keep me down. Me. Keep on lifting 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 me. Higher and higher and higher and higher and higher. Higher and higher. Father, we thank you that you're lifting us up. God, your word said, if you be lifted up, you draw all men unto you. So God, your word also says that if you were raised from the grave, that we are raised with you. God, I thank you that I've been lifted up with you, God. God, that I don't have to stay down. Is that anybody's testimony that you don't have to stay down? God, I thank you that I don't have to stay down in my faults. I don't have to stay down in the pressures of life. I don't have to stay down in the things that are coming against me. God, that you're lifting me above my situation. God, I thank you that because you've lifted us this morning, I can look down at my situation and say everything's going to be all right. Is there anybody here that can praise him that everything's going to be all right? I don't know what you left home with. I don't know what you logged on with, but everything's going to be all right. I declare that over your life. I declare that in this season, that everything's going to be all right. That nothing is a surprise to him, that he never sleeps nor does he slumber. That the God we serve knows every number of hairs on your head. And he knows exactly where you are right now. He's going to meet you in the courtroom. He's going to meet you in the boardroom. He's going to meet you in your bedroom. He's going to meet you in your living room. He's going to meet you between the spaces in your mind that keep being mind battles. God's going to meet you there. God, I thank you that you'll meet us where we need you the most. God, thank you for the worship that's going forth in this place that you keep on lifting us higher and higher and higher. Somebody, you had a great year in 22. God said, this year is going to be better than that. And God says this year is going to be better than that. Somebody wrote a vision and wrote a plan. God said, I'm going to do better than that. God said, I'm going to do greater than that. I declare that over your life. Why do I say it? Because he can do exceedingly and abundantly above all I can ask or think. And God, I thank you that it's going to be better than we can ever imagine. Now, God, I pray that you consume us with your fire, that every word I speak from this moment on might be ordained by the power of your Holy Spirit. And God, we truly come just asking one thing, that somebody's life be changed forevermore. It's in Jesus' name we pray, and every heart said, amen. Would you lift up a praise like never before and give God glory in the building? Children's church may be dismissed, ages K-5 to the fifth grade. The ages K five to fifth grade, you may be dismissed to Children's Church. We welcome you all who are streaming from afar. We thank you for those who are streaming, even right here in town. Thank you for joining our service. We thank God for those who greeted you in the parking lot and those who greeted you at the door. We thank God for those who bring sound and vision to what we say. And can we praise God one more time for this worship experience, the sound and the worship? I honestly should have just sat there and enjoyed that all day. Amen. Listen, Galatians 6 and 7, we're starting a new series today. This is the eighth day of the first month of the year, and I'm always excited about new beginnings. Amen. I believe that this is going to be a new beginning for many of you today. In Galatians 6 and 7, you'll find these words. It says, do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I want to talk from the series title, Work, Work, Work. I need for somebody to understand that this letter to the church at Galatia was written by Paul, honestly, out of frustration. Somebody turn your phone down. I hear myself echoing. And so what ended up happening is he would write this uh, to the church at Galatia, he was writing this out of frustration. He was writing this out of frustration because Paul preached the gospel primarily to the Gentiles. He would preach this gospel to the Gentiles, and it was a gospel of grace. It was a gospel of grace that said that by grace you can be saved through Jesus Christ. The challenge was is that there were many believers who had practiced Jewish law. And because of that, they were trying to convince people that they had to be circumcised and do other things to gain the grace of Jesus Christ.
In, in, in other words, uh, to, to contextualize it in today's time, it would be like somebody saying that just because you didn't come to church in person, you can't be blessed. It, it would be like somebody saying just because you don't sing on the praise team, you can't be blessed. It, it would be like somebody saying that just because we don't wear white on first Sunday, we are not, 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 not blessed because we don't have a communion table, we are not blessed because you don't sing out of a hymn book, you are not blessed. The, 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 the Judeo-Christians, those who were of Jewish law, were trying to push this doctrine on the church at Galatia. And Paul would write this letter out of frustration to say, don't you let anybody take the grace of God that he's already given you. In this letter, he would talk about some of the things that Peter had done and some of the things that James had done and some of the meetings they would have. And he was writing this letter to get the church back in right thinking. And in the middle of this letter, uh, as he is writing this letter, as he's having this conversation with them, in the last chapter of the letter that he is writing, we find the scripture that we read today. I, I want to tell you that Paul was talking about the works of the church, but he talks about it in a very parabolistic way because he gives an image of what work looks like. And I want to sit down on this image for the next several weeks because it grabs my attention because he talks about sowing and reaping. This, this grabs my attention because it is a spiritual law, a spiritual principle, a God-like principle that if you sow something, you will reap something. And, and I want to I deal with this from a visual perspective because Paul is telling them about their works, about their behaviors, and he tells them that be not deceived, God is not mocked, for whatever a man sows, he's going to reap. Uh, I, I want to tell somebody that God's promises are for the workers, not for wishers. I need you to hear that. I want to deal with this early in the year because if we're not careful, you'll be wishing that a lot of things happen. You'll, be, you'll, you'll treat God like a wishing well. You'll show up and think you can just throw a little money in the well and spin around three times and something will happen. And as soon as you finish spinning, God is still going to be asking you, what work did you do? What, what work did your hands do? What, what work did your feet do? What work did you do? What activity did you do? And I know some of you are going to shout me down to say, well, Pastor, what about all the miracles in the Bible. I suggest that God worked through people who did the work. Uh, I believe that if you look at the Bible, Abraham, yes, he believed, uh, but he also moved. Uh, I don't know who I'm talking to, but somebody needs to understand that it's not enough just to believe, but you got to move. Uh, the Bible says that Abraham believed and it was counted to him as righteousness. But when God told him to go, he had to go. Uh, David was chosen, but he also fought. And that some of you, you think just because you're chosen that you're not going to have to fight some giants. And God told me to tell you, you there's still gonna be some giants that you have to fight as a matter of fact I chose you because I knew you would be able to win the fight I wonder if there's anybody here that can thank God that he chose you to fight some battles that he chose you to go through some things Nehemiah had a vision but he still had to build it's not enough for you to just know what it's gonna look like but you got to put your hands to the grind and you're gonna have to build some things in this year that is to come the disciples were called but they still had to go out some of you think just because you called you can sit back. But God told me to tell you that if you're called, uh, you're still going to have to go out. Uh, um, Mary was impregnated by the Holy Spirit, but she still had to carry the baby and deliver. And that some of you, you think just because you got the Holy Ghost, uh, that you're not going to have to carry some weight. God told me to tell you, you still got to carry some things and you still got to push when it's time to deliver what God has put inside of you. And I wonder if there's anybody here that says I'm ready to push towards it. I'm, I'm ready to push in what God has for me. I'm ready to push out what God is putting in my mind. I need for somebody to understand that this idea of work is extremely important. And I suggest that we are an increasingly lazy generation. Wow. And, and so what ends up happening, we think just because God said something, that we don't have to do something. And God said, I said it so you'll do it. Go back to the scripture, it says, do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he will also weep. This first week, I want to talk from the thought, work is required. Work is required. It, it is a requirement for you to get something that you must do something. I, I, I know that this is often the only time in the week that you are inspired and encouraged, and yet I don't want to inspire you in the wrong way because if I do, you will think that the Bible is of no effect. You will think that just because you have faith, that everything is going to happen for you. 
And yet I suggest that there's something to be said about faith and works working together. The, the, the scripture grabs me because it is a, a combination of the efforts between man and God. God says, I'm not going to be mocked that whatever you sow, you're going to reap. In other words, I'm going to watch what you do and I'm going to give you a result of what you did with your hand. Th this is critical because some of us don't want to do the work. And I was thinking about this and I was thinking about this series. And I know I've been giving you uh, uh, statements of faith, but I want to give you some inspirational quotes uh, during this series. Uh, this inspirational quote this week is from Maya Angelou and it says, nothing will work unless you do. I need for some of you to chew on that, that unless you work, it ain't going to work. So, so if you wonder why it's not working, ask yourself, why am I not working? If, if you wonder why it's not happening, ask yourself, what are you not making happen? If you're wondering why it didn't come to pass, ask yourself the question, what did you do to make it come to pass? And I really want to deliver us in, on this sermon today out of the blame game, because some of us do a whole lot of this and not nearly enough. Of that we, we got to get ourselves to this place listen there, there are three things i want to talk about today uh uh, uh well, let, let, me, let me deal with this first though in, in in order for us to understand god we have must understand that god is not only mystical he's methodical I, I i need you to hear that i need you to understand that that god is just not a mystical god He's also methodical. If you know anything about uh, uh, the creation, we understand that when God created the heavens and the earth, that he said a lot of things, but he did a lot of things. Not only did he speak the light, but he separated the light. Not only did he speak about the waters, but he separated the waters. And that was a methodical way that he was making things come to pass. I suggest that many of us want the mystery of God, but we don't want the method of God. The, the, the mystery of God is this idea of things happening, the supernatural power, the things that took place that we did not understand. And yet at the same time, there's a methodical power that comes with us simply doing the work. Did you not hear Jesus show up to the people in the parable of the talents and ask them, why don't you have more? It is because they had been given talents and they were supposed to produce something out of what they've been given. What are you producing out of what God has given you? What, what, what are you producing? It's not just the mystical nature, but it's the methodical nature. Listen, there are three things I want to talk about today. I want to talk about the opportunity, the option, and the outcome. Write it down. The opportunity, the option, and the outcome. We all want the outcome, but you've got to deal with the opportunity and the option before you get to the outcome. Let, let, let's talk about the opportunity. I, I, I suggest that each and every one of us have been given an opportunity. And if you don't believe that you have an opportunity, that's part of the problem. Because if you start off thinking how bad life is for you, you can never it, it be able to uh, manifest how great life could be for you. So for some of us, the reason that we never do anything is because of how we see ourselves and how we see life. I, I want to deal with this by definition. The opportunity, it says, a set of circumstances that makes it possible to do something opportunity, a set of circumstances that makes it possible to do something. I like that definition because it talks about a set of circumstances, which means my circumstance and your circumstance might not be the same. I, I need to deal with that because there's some of you, you're not doing something because your circumstance is not as good as somebody else's. And what you're doing is you're lusting after their circumstance. And you're saying, well, if I was in that situation, I would be doing more. And God is saying, you ain't doing nothing with what you got right now. And so there's some of us, we are lamenting over the fact that there's a circumstance that somebody else has that we don't. And many of us spend so much time wishing we were somebody else versus enjoying who we are. And God told me to tell you, I didn't call you to be that. I called you to be you. And what ends up happening is we are so lustful after what we see versus who we are. And God said, if you could ever just take the opportunity that I've given you, you'll have everything you need. Am I talking to anybody? Listen, let's put the first image on the screen. For some of us, this is all we see is opportunity. That's all we see. We, we, we see that we don't have any opportunity unless there's a bunch of money on the table. And, and all we lust after is, I wish I had, that's why some of you play the lottery every week. Give me that dollar, if you don't mind. And I'm going to leave it alone. <laughs> but, but, but it is because that's the only thing that some of us see is opportunity. And so what ends up happening is when people offer you something or, or God opens a door for you, if the door doesn't look like this, you don't see it as a blessing. What do you do when a door opens next image and it looks like this? 
See, we don't like this kind of image because we start saying, God, I don't know. I don't know what to do with this. I don't know what to do with that. God, you're just giving me a blank slate. God, you're just giving me something, and you're not giving me enough answers next image. But God told me to tell you that the image on the left next image, uh, the image on the left is a limitation. It's a limitation because once that money is gone, I ain't going to be able to get no more. But if he ever gave me an idea to write down, if he ever gave me something to put in my mind, if he ever gave me a vision right out. I can make more money than that little bit of money on the table. I came to meet you here to tell you, you don't need a good idea. You need a God idea. I wonder if there's anybody here that says, God, give me a God idea. Give me something that I can make more money than I ever envisioned. If you're watching me online, drop me a hashtag, God idea. I need a God idea. I I need a God idea. I need a God idea. I I don't need a good idea. I need a God idea. And there's some of you, if you're limited just to a stack of money, that's going to be gone tomorrow. But God, if you give me an idea, I can eat and my children can eat and my children's children can eat and the kids down the street can eat. I need a God idea that will bless everything that's attached to me. Is there anybody here that believes that God can give you an idea that will bless your bloodline, that will bless everything that's connected to you, that will bless your whole city? God, he give me a God idea. Some of you are looking for opportunity and you only see it in a monetary way. And the reason that you can't be blessed is because you're missing out on the fact that God is trying to let you build something. And you're just trying to take the fruit off the tree instead of doing the work that's, that's necessary. Is, is there anybody here listening to me? Uh, I don't want to just talk about the opportunity, but I also want to talk about the option. I need for somebody to understand that God ain't going to make you work. I I need you to hear that. I need you to get that deep in your spirit. God is not going to make you work. He's not going to make you do anything. The scripture says whatever a man sows means if you sow in laziness, you're going to get laziness. God is not going to make you work. You have an option. I'm not going to make you work. I I I get people that pick up the phone and call me about things, and I don't know what you want me to say. I can't make you work. I've decided in 2023, matter of fact, I decided last year, I'm not dragging anybody anywhere. I want, I want to deal with that. I want you to hear me clearly. I'm not dragging anybody anywhere. I don't mean to sound non-pastoral because I'm willing to carry you if you can't walk today. Hear me. Hear me clearly. If you say, Pastor, I don't know how to get there, I'll carry you for a while. But dragging you means you're pulling your weight against me. I'm not dragging anybody anywhere because if you don't want to get there, I'm not going to beg you to get there because God ain't going to drag you no way either. Some of you want to be drug into places. You want God to drag you into blessings. It's an option. Listen, we all have three options. We all have three options, and I'm going to give you all three of them, and we're going to deal with them. You have the options to wonder, to wander, or to work. Three options. You can wonder, you can wander, or you can work. And whatever you do is going to be the outcome. And I suggest that many of your lives look like one of these things. You're going to know which one soon. You can wonder, you can wander, or you can work. Let's deal with the option to wonder. The the, the option to wonder is for those people that are always wondering what it would be like if. How many of you know some if people in your life? I I wonder what it would be like if I did this, but but they never quite do it. Go ahead and put that image up. This, This is the wondering image. You're always looking out the window at what everybody else is doing. You're always peeking out at somebody else's behavior. Peeking out on other people's page. People you might know is because they've been peeking your page. Peeking out and wondering what they're doing. Even some people visit the church and they just, I wonder what's going on in there. And they're peeking. But I don't, I don't really want to get involved. I don't really want to get engaged. I just want to spend my life wondering. And, and, and a wondering life never really produces anything. God told me to tell you, stop wondering and start working. That's a word for somebody today. Some of you have been wondering since you've been in high school. And wonderers produce wonderers. Some of your kids wonder because you wonder. And and so you do a whole lot of talking but not a whole lot of doing. And there's so many people, if you hear their story, they can tell you what they were going to be versus who they are. And so they spend their entire lives 
wondering and producing wonders. Because the truth is, at the core of a wonderer, they're afraid they're going to step out. It's easy to wonder. It's hard to work. It's, it's very easy to look at somebody else's work. It's very easy to have an opinion on somebody else's work. Be very careful of opinionated people that ain't done nothing. I like opinions that come with experience. In my opinion, I would do this because when I did it, I, I want to hear that. But when you say, in my opinion, I would do it, but I ain't never done it before, then stop wondering about what I'm doing. Be very careful of wanderers who don't work. Option two is wandering. I, I, I want to spend some critical time here because wandering often looks like working. So I really need you to hear this because this is deliverance group. The, 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 the wonder group, they, they don't really want to work anyway. They just want to look. I just want them to be quiet. But the wandering group often thinks they're working. Go ahead and put that image up. Some of you are just going around in circles. And it looked like you're working, but you're not. It looked like you're producing, but you're not. You took a whole lot of steps. As a matter of fact, sometimes it takes more industry to wander than to work. So you're tired, but nothing's happening. What does it feel like to be tired, but I ain't got nothing to show for it? Work all week long, ain't got a penny to my name. Work all day long and feel unfulfilled, unsuccessful, unachieved. But I'm doing stuff. I'm wandering. I wonder if there's anybody here who's listening to this that says, some of us are wandering and it ain't working. Is there anybody here that, that, that's speaking to you? I mean, I, I go to work and I wander. I'm in a relationship and I'm wandering. I go to church and I'm wandering. I sit down to dinner with my family, I'm wandering. I'd have been to school for 15 different degrees. I ain't never got one, one certificate. I'm wandering. I'd have started 18 different businesses. I ain't never sold a darn thing. I'm, 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 I'm wandering. I go to the gym on Monday, and I go to the craft shack on Tuesday. I'm, 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 I'm wandering. I'm preaching to myself, y'all. I'm not pointing at you. I'm, 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 I'm wandering. And, 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 and it feels good because at least you're not wondering. So the wanderers point out the wanderers. And they say, at least I left the house. But just because you left the house doesn't mean you really got anywhere. So what you do is you anesthetize your pain by saying, at least I'm not like them. Because all they do is look out the window. At least I went outside. But those of us who are working are wondering when you're going to stop wandering. <laughs> the workers of us, we keep wondering, are you going to stop wandering? And be very careful because when you try to coach a wanderer, they get offended. Because wandering and working are like oil and water. So when you start telling somebody everything you're doing is really not amount to anything, they don't know how to hear it. Because normally their parents are wanderers. And their circle are wanderers. And we want to wander around and go around and around in circles. So when you change the game on a wanderer, sometimes they don't let you work in their lives. So you ask them, does it have to be this way? Do we have to go in this circle? Do we have to keep the cycle? And for a wanderer, all they know is routine. They don't know how to break the cycle. Am, am, I, am I helping anybody today? I'm trying to get you out of the circle. And, and so number three is the option of working. The, the option of working is the option of being effective. I, I was talking to somebody about this yesterday, and we were talking about leadership. And, and, and leadership can get very, um, very, very colored. We, what's a great leader? What's a good leader? What's, what's, a, what's, a, what's a nice leader? What's a, what's a tough leader? I just want to be an effective leader. Effective is the neutralizing word. I want my work to be effective. I don't care how I do it. I just want it to be effective to the outcome that I desire. 
And there's some of you, your wandering is not effective. Your wandering is never going to be effective. And so your work, in order for it to be effective, you have to understand what real work is. Go ahead and put that gym image up. I was thinking about this. Now, anybody that knows me personally knows I'm a, I'm a grocery store fan. I think it helps me think better. And anytime I go to the produce section of the grocery store, I am partaking of somebody else's work. In other words, this is what effectiveness looks like. So I go into the grocery store and I go to the produce section because I want to pick off what they've already done the work for. Such is some of your lives. Some of us don't want to plant anything. We just want to eat everything that's already been planted. And that's okay in the grocery store, but it ain't going to work for your career, baby. That's okay in the produce section, but it ain't going to work for your relationships. That's okay in the produce section, but it ain't going to work if you want to have a better health in your body. And so what happens is we are accustomed to pulling off everybody else's work. And because we are accustomed to pulling off everybody else's work, we don't really know what real work looks like. Thus, when we come to a scripture like this, and it says, be not deceived, God is not mocked, so for whatever man sows, that, w- that shall he also reap. We are not accustomed to sowing anything. We are just accustomed to reaping the benefits of somebody else's sowing. And God told me to tell you in this season, I'm calling some real workers. Am I talking to anybody in the room? Listen, I, I need for somebody to understand that if you're going to really work, then you're going to get the outcome. See, the opportunity and the options are what lead us to the outcomes. And I suggest that no outcome is ever going to come if you don't do the work. Tell somebody next to you do the work. If, if, if you don't do the work, you will never get the outcome that you really want. And I was thinking about how to show you this, and then I'm going to get out of your way. Brother, Brother Graham, help me out. I, I was thinking about how to show you this, and, and, and I was praying about this, and, and then we're going to go home and, and let you chew on this word for the day. And, and, and so I, I went out and I bought something, and I was thinking about sowing a seed. We're going to put it right here just like this. Thank you, sir. And, 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 and when, when, when you sow a seed, there are a couple of ways that you can sow a seed. One way you can sow a seed is to simply scatter it. Some of you like this because you just throw it in there and, and hope it works. I wonder how many people have done some things and you're just hoping it works. I hope this business works out. I hope this job works out. I hope this relationship works out. And the outcome I'm trying to produce, I'm just hoping that it works. I'm just throwing seeds out there. I'm just throwing goals out there. I'm just throwing dreams out there. At least I'm working in some way, shape, or form. But the truth is, I'm not doing no hard work. I'm just hoping that it works. And God told me to tell you that if if you really go sow a seed, and if you really go do some things, you just can't keep throwing things out there. You can't just keep throwing dreams out there. You just can't keep throwing visions out there. But you're going to have to get to a place where you really do some work. So I was thinking about how you really sow a seed. And for some of you, God told me to tell you, you're going to have to dig some things up. There's some things in your life. There's some things that are messy. There's some things that are dirty. That if you really want to get to the bottom of where you want to go, you're going to have to dig get some dirt and throw some things over. And I wonder, is there anybody here that says, Pastor, I got some things that I need to dig up. Some of you need to dig up your negative attitude. Some of you need to dig up some unhealthy relationships. Some of you need to dig up some disappointments. Some of you need to dig up some things that your third grade teacher said to you. Some of you need to dig up some things that you've been saying to yourself. And then when I dig it up, then when I sow a seed, what ends up happening is I sow sow the seed and when I put the seed in the ground now I put the dirt back over it now why do I have to go through some mess God told me to tell you that the messy places are gonna lead you to a miracle I wonder is there anybody watching me that says I'm about to dig some things up and get real dirty I don't mind getting my hands dirty I don't mind getting my shoes dirty I don't mind getting my mind dirty because the truth is I'm willing to go through the mess to get through my miracle is there anybody watching me that 
understand that sometimes you got to pick up a shovel and dig some things up in your life. I wonder, is there anybody here that says there's some things in my life I'm going to have to dig up? Some of you got to dig up some friendships. Some of you got to dig up some past things. Some of you got to dig up some unhealthy thoughts that you have in your mind. Some of you need to dig up your mouth and change the way your tongue is. You got to dig it up and let the seed of God get deep down inside of you. The Bible says, whatever a man sows, that is said he also reap, which means you got to work. If you're watching me online, drop me a hashtag. I'm about to go to work. I'm ready to work. I'm ready to move. I'm ready to shift. I'm ready to change. Somebody give God praise. There are going to be some things in your life that you won't have to dig up. And I know it don't feel good. And I know it don't look good. But it's going to require that you take the shovel in your hand. I don't know who this is for. But some of this, this is your call log. Dig it up. For some of this, these are your social media friends. Dig them up. For some of you, this is the person you came to church with. Take an Uber. Dig it up. Oh, it's tight, but it's right. For some of this, this is your tradition. Dig it up. Some of this, this is your lack of self-esteem. Dig it up. Some of this, this is the judgment that you have for other people. Dig it up. For some of this, this is how you see yourself in the mirror. Dig it up. Get it all out of the way so that you can really plant a seed of God inside of you. It is going to require work. And I know it, it, th this ain't the kind of stuff you want to hear, but it's the kind of stuff you need to hear. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatever a man sows, that shall he also reap. Next week, we're going to continue in the same series entitled Work. But this week, every head is bowed, every eye is closed. I fully believe that God's going to give you the strength to do the work. And there's always a moment in the sermon where I feel like I'm specifically talking to some people. I want to talk to the wanderers today. Because... The wandering is the most hard part. When, when I'm wandering, it looks like I'm working. When, 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 when I'm wandering, it looks like it should be manifesting in my life, but it's not. It's hard to admit you're a wanderer. So trust me, my ego is never on display when I call you. Only an opportunity for you to change your life. If you've been going around in circles wandering, I want to meet you here at the altar. I believe today is a cycle break day. It's a cycle break day. It's the eighth day of the first month of the year. It's on purpose. Going around in circles wandering. Thank you. Going around in circles wandering. Going around in circles wandering. Tired of being in the cycle. If you're watching me online, Two words, it's me. It's me. You are my strength. I see you. Reach it. Some of you are hard workers. I mean, really hard workers. It's not because of a lack of effort. It ain't because you're not trying. I, I, I want to say that because I know what it is to wonder. I, I said during my sermon, I want to talk to people that have done it by experience. I spent time in my life going in circles. And when you realize that it doesn't feel good. 
I don't even want to pretend that when I realized it was the day I got out of the circle. Because sometimes you see yourself going in circles, but you still don't know how to stop. Some of you, that's you today. You say, Pastor, I, I, I know I'm going in circles. And I want to get out of the cycle. But I don't know how. I suggest you're going to have to dig some things up, sweetie. You're going to have to dig some things up. And the reason I touch your head, because what you got to dig up is in your mind. Some of you are going around in circles because you don't think you can go in another direction. You convince yourself that that's the only way you can go. You convince yourself that there's no other way to go. I, I'm heavy about this one because sometimes going in, in, in circles, it worked in one area of my life. Hey, bullshit. But God told me to tell you it ain't going to work in this area. What, 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 what do you do when the circle you were in was for two years ago, but it's not for today? What do you do? 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 When, 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 when the circle you were in was for three years ago, but it's not, it's not for today. God told me to tell you that he can't put new wine in old wine skins. And the problem is you've been in a, you've been in a circle that, that wasn't for you. You've been in a circle that's not for you. You've been in a circle that, that's not for this season. God said it worked then, but it's not going to work now. And that's why I'm calling you out. It worked when, when you were that person. But you're not that person anymore. I, I hear that for some of you. I, I, I got a new phone not too long ago. And, and, and I realized that none of the accessories on the old phone worked on the new phone. Yeah, more shit to hit. God told me to tell you that it's not working, not because you're not working, but you're a new person. And, and you got to be bold enough to say out loud, this ain't working for me. I, I hear that. You got to be bold enough to communicate what's not working for you. And, and you got to be willing to lose some things. See, see, when I got the new phone, I had to get rid of the old charger. When, when, when I got the new phone, I had to get rid of the old case. When, when, I, when I got the new phone, it, it, it didn't fit some things. It, it wasn't working for me. It made no sense to even keep them. But I know when I say it's not working for me, Pastor, people are going to walk away. That's the digging, baby. That's the digging. That's the digging. That's the digging. You got to dig it up. I, I, I like the scripture where it says whatever a man sows, because there's some things God's not going to dig up for you. You're going to have to dig it up for yourself. You, you've been pray, praying, God, take this person away. And God's been praying, walk away, son. Walk away. Walk away. Put one foot in front of the other. Isn't it amazing that we know how to walk towards some things, but we can't walk away from other things? God told me to tell you that you got to be bold when you walk away. It, it, it takes a boldness because often walking away means you don't know exactly what you're walking to. You got to be bold enough to say, I might not know where I'm going, but I know this ain't it. I, I might not know where I'm going, but I know I can't stay here. I, I might not know where I'm going to arrive, but I know this ain't the place for me. Be bold enough to walk away. Be bold enough to walk away. Be bold enough to walk away. God, I declare that the cycle is broken. I declare that the cycle is broken. That you're not the same person. That they look down on hey, boy. You're not the same person that they ridiculed. You're not the same person that they rejected. You're not the same person that they didn't think was good enough. I want you to get rid of everything that reminds you of what was. I, 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 it's time for a purging in your life. I, I, I want you to do this exercise. I want you to get rid of it. I'm not talking about putting it in a closet. I'm not putting it, talking about putting it in a drawer. I'm talking about throwing it away. And if you got fire, burn it up. Get it, out, get it out of your house. Get it out of your way. Get it out of your sight. Get it out of anything that you can touch and see. 
it doesn't belong to you anymore. It doesn't belong to you. That hurt doesn't belong to you. That disappointment doesn't belong to you. Anytime it comes to your mind, I want you to tell the devil, that don't belong to me. 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 All those things that are trying to get in my mind, they don't belong to me. 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 God, I thank you for a new mindset. God, but just because my mind changed, it doesn't mean my pattern has changed. God says it's time to change your pattern. This is going to be big for you. And, and, and there's some deep-rooted things that are going to come from an external change first. I, I, hear, hear me clearly. I don't even want you to drive to work the same way tomorrow. I don't even want you to go home the same way tomorrow. I, 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 don't, I don't even want, as a matter of fact, go out a different door. Go in a different door when you get to work. You're going to have to start changing your whole pattern. You've been doing it the same way for so long. You can't imagine what it would look like if you did it different. God says you're going to have to start changing up at the core of you. At the core of who you are. Don't even sit in the same place in your house. Don't even eat on the same side of the table. Change everything up. Everything up. Everything up. Everything up. You got to be willing to change it up. I declare when you drive that new way to work in tomorrow, you're going to see something different. I don't even know what road you're going to be on, and I already speak it over your life. You're going to see something different. There's going to be a new billboard. There's going to be a new sign. There's going to be somebody or someone that you pass. There's going to be something that says, this is what Pastor was talking about. I, I, I speak that over your life. You're going to see something different tomorrow on your new journey to work. It might take you a little longer, and that's the whole point. It, it might be a ceiling route, and that's the whole point. It, you, you, you're going to see something different. You might, have to, you might have to slow down in a little bit more traffic. That's the whole point. But you're still going to get there. God's going to use this to remind you that I'm going to take you a different way, but I'm going to get you to your destiny. You, you've been thinking that the only way to get the way you're going is the way you're going, but you really have been wondering. God says, I'm going to take you a new way to get to your destiny. God, I thank you for my brother. God, who has a hunger and a thirst after you? God, I pray against everything that he used to be. I pray against everything that has normally uh, been a part of what people have said about him. As a matter of fact, I close his ears to the outside world. God, I pray that he stop overhearing things and start hearing from you. I pray that he stop overhearing the rumor mill and start hearing from you. I pray that you start silencing the hidden whispers in his life and he start hearing from you. I pray, God, that every voice that's not like you, that it starts to be drowned out in his mind, God. God, I pray, God, that you separate him from everything that doesn't look like you. I pray, God, that you give him the strength, God, to walk away, God, from everything that doesn't feel like you. God says, I know it's not going to be easy, but you're going to have to press. I know it's not going to be easy, but you're going to have to push. I know it's not going to be easy, but you're going to have to employ the same thing that you coach people on. God says, my spirit is about to start coaching you on. God says, there's more in you than you know. One more round, one more set, one more push, one more effort. It's in you. God says, I'm going to work your spirit in the same way that you're working people's body. I'm about to give you some new muscles. Yeah, bullshit to hear. I'm, I'm about to give you a new prayer language. I'm, I'm about to give you a new scripture to read. I'm, I'm about to give you a new angel to show up at your house. I declare that over your life. He's about to give you something brand new, brother. Brand new. God, I thank you for the strength that's going to come. God, I see them holding hands, and I don't know, God, what you want to do in this relationship. But whatever it is, God, I declare that you can bring forth restoration. God, I pray that you dig up words that were spoken that are unhealthy. God, you dig up things that were, were stated, God, that they're trying to heal and recover from. God, you, you, you dig up things, God, that have been declared that are not from you. Dig it up, God. Dig it up and plant a seed, a new seed. A new seed. I, I don't want to get too ahead of myself, but before this series is over, we're going to talk about pulling up weeds. God told me to tell you there's some weeds that you're going to have to pull up in your life. That just because you planted a seed, it don't mean it ain't going to be no weeds. There's some weeds in your garden, and I declare that those weeds are going to have to get pulled up. 
anything that doesn't look like the fruit that you planted, start pulling it up. And then you're going to have to get rid of the vultures. The things that come to eat of the things that you planted, you're going to have to get rid of the vultures. There's some vultures that you're going to have to get out of your garden. There's some vultures that you're going to have to get out. All they came to do is take. God told me to tell you to get them out of there. They don't belong there. They don't belong there. They don't belong there. God, I thank you for a new mindset. I want to pray that over you. A new mindset. God said it's not a thing of capability. It's a point of decision for you. You have everything you need. I want to touch your hands if I can. Because I know the work that you do with your hands. I know the people that you administer healing to with your hands. God says sometimes you ask the question, how can I heal with my hands with hands that hurt so bad? I want to pray over your hands. That God says I'm going to heal your hands the same way that you administer care. I'm about to give you some care to your hands. I'm about to heal you. You say, God, how can you have people to be caring for people and I don't even know how to care for myself. God says, I'm about to start caring for you. I'm about to give you a prescription that's going to change your very life. I declare that, that he's about to heal your hands. He's about to, he's about to use your hands in a mighty way. I speak that over you. That there's something powerful in these hands. But you're going to have to take a turn. You're going to have to take a turn. See, the thing about going around in circles that oftentimes we miss our turn. You feel like you miss some turns. I hear God saying that. You feel like you miss some turns. <laughs> and there's, there's, a, there's a pain in a circle and there's a privilege in a circle. The pain in the circle is that I'm tired of going in circles. But the privilege is, is when I go around that circle one more time, there goes my turn again. And God told me to tell you it's about to be your turn again. I speak that over you. I declare that over you. Lay aside every weight and every sin that so easily besets you. There's some weight on you. There's a heaviness on you. And you're tired of carrying it. You're tired of carrying it. You feel like if you don't carry it, everything's going to fall apart. You feel like if you don't carry it, everything's going to sink. So you carry it not because you feel qualified to, but you feel like you have to. I declare over your life that this weight is not yours anymore. I want to speak that over you there. You've been going around in circles for other people. You've been going around in circles for other people, not because you want to be there, but you've been going around in circles trying to do it for somebody else. I'm in the circle because I don't want to disappoint. I'm in the circle because I don't want to let down. I'm in the circle because I don't want to let go. And God told me to tell you that the same weight you're carrying for others, you are missing your turning point. You're missing your opportunity. You're missing your, op your, your ability to work because you're working on somebody else's behalf. You're going to have to start walking for you. You're going to have to start walking for you. You're going to have to start walking for you. I want you to take a step forward and another step and another step and another step. I just walked you out of disappointment. I just walked you out of frustration. I just walked you out of fear. I just walked you out of pain. You can't stay where you are. You don't belong there. It wasn't meant for you to be there. You're greater than the circumstance that you're in. I needed to walk you out of that. I needed to walk you out of that. Father, I thank you for my sister who has so much experience with pain that sometimes she thinks that that's what it's supposed to look like. I got to speak that over you, sister. It ain't supposed to be hard. As a matter of fact, if, if you don't mind me being bold enough to say, sometimes you make it hard because that's all you're accustomed to. When it looks too easy, you don't trust it. But God says, take my yoke upon you because my yoke is easy and my burden is light. I declare that over your life that he's about to lighten your load. 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 He's about to walk you out of some things and into some things. Thank you, God, for my sister. God, who is at a restarting point of her life. God told me to tell you, don't be embarrassed. I want, as a matter of fact, I want you to lift your head up. Because I, I feel that there are times where 
you're embarrassed about how far you're not. And God told me to tell you, stop being ashamed for how, how far you're not and be thankful for how far I'm about to take you. You got to walk out of that spirit of shame. And I should have been this and I should have been that. God says you are this and you are that. And I'm about to make you something new. Stop lamenting over what didn't happen and start celebrating what I'm about to make happen. As a matter of fact, lift your hands. This is your season of celebration. This is your season of coming out. This is your season of breakthrough. This is your season of freedom. This is your season of joy. This is your season to walk in everything that you've been wanting. This is your season. Father, I thank you for every person that walked up here. God, they walked out of a wandering cycle. Every person that typed online is me. They walked out of a wandering place into a working place. Before you leave this altar, before you sign off for this altar moment, I need for you to understand that when you stepped up here, you stepped into a place of work. That, 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 that you're going to have to put your hand to the plow. That you're going to have to dig some things up. That, 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 that the step you took was not just a step for you to walk out, but it was a step for you to work. So God, I declare that you're going to give them every tool that they need. God, I declare that you're going to give them the strength that they need. God, I declare that you're going to give them the energy that they need. God, I declare that you're going to give them the persistence and the consistency that they need. I declare you're going to give them the confidence that they need. God, I declare that you're going to give them the bonus that they need. God, I thank you, God, that you're going to give them the resources that they need. Everything you need, God is going to put it in your hand. Everything you need, God is going to put it before you. Every person that you need. God's going to connect you with them. I declare with everybody watching me, wherever they are, that everything you need is going to meet you where you are. And we declare it, and we count it all joy. And every heart said amen, amen, and amen. Give God glory. Higher, higher. I dare not end this altar without two calls. The one is for salvation. If you've never been saved, if you've never confessed with your mouth and believed in your heart that Jesus is Lord, he can lift you out of a place of sin into a place of salvation. All you have to do is confess and believe. If you're watching us online and you need salvation, just type salvation. If you're watching us in the room and you want to be saved, meet me right here. The second call is for membership of the Change Church. I want you to know that God has called this movement to do three things, to give, to grow and to go. If that's you today, you say, Pastor, I want to be a part of this movement. I want to join the Change Church and I want to be a part of what God is doing here. If that's you, you can meet us right here if you're in the room. If you're watching online, I don't care if you're in California or if you're in Asia. If you want to join us, just type in that word membership and we'll meet you right where you are. Somebody give God glory today. I say give God glory that he's adding to the church. God has given us what we need to do the work. The work is going to be done by the hands of his people. Thank you, God. Minister Redmond will connect with you and get you the information that you need. And we thank you guys for stepping out and joining this movement to give, to grow, and to go. Amen. God bless this family. God bless this family. God's going to do something in your life. There's a place for you here. We're grateful that you're here. Amen. Ministers, you may be seated. We thank you guys for being here up here and being a part of what we're doing and we're grateful for what God is doing in this season. Amen. 
it's time for us to do a life changing every week. Uh, it is our job and our goal to change somebody's life. That's a part of our give. So if you know people who need a life changing, if you know people that are in need, we ask that you say something about it and we'll do what we can to do something about it. Amen. Our life changing this week is Janika Pearson, who's one of our members, uh, who is going through some challenges and we're giving her a check for $500. Amen. Can somebody give God praise for that? We give God glory for that. Amen. Amen. Are there any people visiting with us for the first time? We don't want to make you say anything. We just want to see your face. Any first-timers, please stand. Just stand up and be recognized. Amen. God bless you. Thank you all for being here. Hope you guys come back again. Uh, we start at 9 a.m. every Sunday, and we hope to see you again. Uh, security, we're going to exit out of this door today um, so them people can get their children. We thank God for the children's church. Teachers, make sure you take your kids with you. Amen. We're grateful for that. Uh, Let's put the G3 up. Don't forget the G3 team ministry. If you're a teenager, uh, we're starting a, a team ministry moment. And if you will, uh, it should be on the QR codes. If I didn't put it in there, that's on me. But uh, Lavoie is in the uh, lobby as well. If you have a team, you want to sign them up. Um, meet Lavoie in the lobby. He'll check. Uh, get your team signed up. We're going to have our first event in February. I'm sorry about that. I left that out. We'll have our first event in February, and we'll do our G3 teams ministry. Um, how many of you want information about relationships and better relationships? Anybody? Anybody need better relationship information? Amen. And if you don't want to say it, just blink. I know they might be sitting next to you. Well, listen, we're going to have an event here on February 3rd called Live, Laugh, and Love. And we're excited about that. That's going to be a Friday night. Uh, the event is going to be a panel discussion on all types of relationships, married relationships, single relationships, how to deal with divorce. Um, also, we're going to have the laugh portion. The lovely big O is going to give us some comedy, and that's going to be the laugh portion. And then the love portion, we're going to have the singer Jamie right here, and her, she's going to be singing, and we're going to have dancing, and it's also going to be catered by Mo Flavors, so if you want some food, listen, it's $25 a person or $50 a couple, so it's $25 either way, it ain't no discount, I ain't trying to, I ain't trying to fool you, so $25 a person or $50 a couple, Minister Redman will be in the lobby, Minister Redman, raise your hand, she will be taking sign-ups today. We need to get our head count down, so please make sure if you want to come, invite somebody to join you. We'll be posting this on social media this week. Live, laugh, and love. We need to know how to live in relationships. We need to know how to laugh through some things, and we need to know how to love. Amen. And so that'll be here on February the 3rd, Friday night in February, the season of love, and we're looking forward to having you come out to that. If you need counsel, don't forget the Upstate Counseling Center. Some of you need counseling to work through some things. If you need career coaching, we want to hook you up with Latia um, to help you with a uh, career and resume. Some of you need to get a better job on your, on your daily work. Uh, last and certainly not least, Bible study will be starting on this Wednesday at 7 p.m. Minister Brewster will be teaching it to be online. If you come here, we won't be here. It's going to be online. So Bible study is online at 7 p.m. And uh, Minister Bruce will be teaching this coming Wednesday. We're excited about that. Don't forget our prayer call at 7.45 a.m. on Tuesday. And then listen to us on the radio uh, on 96.9 at 12.30 on Sundays. We're excited about that. I don't think I forgot anything. Oh, yeah. So if you're visiting, make sure that you uh, sign the card in the back of your chair uh, and turn that in. We want to give you a gift for the gift of your presence. So please sign the card, turn that in, and we want to give you a gift. Um, don't think I missed anything else. Um, and uh, last and certainly not least, on your way out, please make sure you trust God with your tithes and your offering. Amen. That gives us an opportunity to do the life changing like we did today. And we're certainly grateful for that. So let's stand that we prepare to give as we go. We're going to go out of this door back to the vestibule. God, we thank you for who you are. We thank you that your hand is upon us. We thank you, God, that you're going to help us stop wandering and start working. Help us do the work of your kingdom, God, and let your word be true that whatever we sow will also so read. Now may the grace of our Lord and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest rule and abide henceforth now and forever. And every heart said, Amen. You may give as you go.